satu hmm. Look at this brave little piece of grass Facing the dangers of the wild all by itself But don't worry Because in reality This grass isn't alone The 10% rule states that Producers, the piece of grass, has have 90% more biomass altogether than consumers, the cow. What's that? You don't know what biomass means? You don't know what the 10% rule is? Hmm. Well, don't worry. I know someone who can explain it to you. The 10% rule is an approximation of the amount of biomass passed between trophic levels. Whoa, that was a lot of big words. Let's go over them. Biomass is the total mass of something, minus the mass of the water. A trophic level is basically just a level of a food chain. Let's use the cow example from before, but let's replace humans with bears. We can symbolically place grass, cows, and bears on different levels. The grass is a producer in this system, meaning that it harvests energy and matter from sunlight and its surroundings. The cows eat, or consume, the grass. For this reason, they are called consumers. Because they are the first in this food web to eat something else, they are called primary consumers. This bear eventually eats the cows. Because it is eating a consumer, it is called a secondary consumer. Now when you line up the trophic levels, it forms a pyramid, known as the energy pyramid. Wait, who said anything about a pyramid? Trophic levels form a pyramid because of the 10% rule. Remember that? Remember biomass? No? Let's recap. The biomass of something is the total mass of the thing minus the mass of its water. The 10% rule states that when something eats or consumes something else, only 10% of the biomass is transferred. But wait, what about the other 90%? That 90% is burned off by the consumer for energy. This means that only 10% of biomass moves between trophic levels. So, why is each trophic level smaller than the last? This is because, for an ecosystem to last, each trophic level must have 10 times the biomass of the following level. Think about it. How much grass is there compared to cow? Cows to bears. For every one bear, there's 10 times the biomass of cow. And for every one cow, there's 10 times the biomass of grass. Now, how could this apply to humans? Let's take a vegetarian and a carnivore. The vegetarian only eats grass, and the carnivore only eats steak. To get his or her portion of food, the vegetarian must consume one serving of grass. The carnivore must consume one portion of steak, which seems like the same amount of food. However, they are thereby consuming ten times the grass because they are being secondary consumers. So what if we all became vegetarians, or at least part-time? Every meal of veggies would cut down on the resources used to 10%. If we had that much free food, no one would go hungry. So what will you do?